Hey everybody, so by way of a Jeep update, this happened. What you're looking at is the NP247 transfer case. It blew up on me on the highway. The Jeep has over 200,000 miles on it. Uh, more like 213, something like that. Uh, and at 209, I had to replace the engine. It, not because of the engine, something happened inside. I had another uh, malfunction. I pulled over the side of the highway and the airbox wasn't attached. And I had been through some stuff and uh, got an engine, check light, etc., etc. I just determined to get a new engine. So, got a new uh, rebuild with a uh, uh, high output manifold, so a little bit more power there. And it runs good, but honestly, I just have not been making as many trips because of time and money issues. So, uh, uh, since then, I've got maybe less than 3,000 miles on it since the new engine, and uh, then this happened. The, the things are rated to last 180,000, something like that, so uh, over 20 or over 200k. This is what is called an upgrade opportunity. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go from the MP247 to the MP242 HD heavy duty and uh, that is going to allow a locking function on the axles axle axles I'm not really sure which one applies but it's basically the old Jeep XJ uh, transmission that was available as an option on the WJ between 02 and 03 for the V8s anyway I found one and it's coming, so right now I've got to go ahead and disassemble all this stuff and get ready for the new one. Okay, so first thing is removing the rear drive shaft. 8mm. Oh, it's hard to do this with the camera in one hand. I need leverage. I will be back. And there you have it. Notice this is all shiny. That's because it's oily from the nasty. When the casing exploded, everything's wet. Oh. All right. Okay, so the 247 driveline has a 27 spline rear drive shaft. So the 242 HD has a 32 spline rear drive shaft and also the end of it right there is going to be longer so your drive shaft actually needs to be a little shorter so some things to be resolved chain broke like a mofo look at that total breakage. I don't get that at all. Yep. Chain failure. Boop. Where's my staples button? If you've had this type of experience before, leave comments below, let me know. So the question, of course, for me is how to get the uh, how to get the slip yoke off of here. Because I gotta get it off and I don't have a vice. So challenging mode. Do -do 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 -do. But at least I have access to the four bolts right here, so I'll be able to disconnect the uh, the actual drive shaft from it. But let me get on that. All right, same as the install video. When I did the drive shaft change. Uh, eight millimeter, but twelve point bolts going in here. Challenging to say the least. Uh, so I'm trying to untorque, but. Turning out to be easier than expected. 
All right, let me get these off. I'll get right back to you guys. Okay, so off it came. Uh, challenging mode now. What the challenge is is I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need this flange right here. But without this thing actually being attached to anything, how to break this bolt? So that's gonna be crazy right now. All right, ladies and germs, I did not even mess around. I got stuff to do, so I went and uh, took this to my local Napa, put it on a vise. If you have a vise, should be no problem. You just lock this in there and break that nut, okay? So, no bigs there. of that scene in the thing one day pull the skin off of the alien and reveal the little dog thingy that the thing was trying to imitate okay so huge problem already you can see right here this cavity I don't know what, but the speedometer thingy goes in here and it's just empty. So you can see the gear in there and I don't know what is supposed to go in there. But this is, uh, yep, 242 AMG. You can hear me over the wind. So this is off of a Hummer. What? Solid state, baby. Can't wait for this to go on there. I hope it works. Okay, I need to find out what to do with this. So, might have encountered some drama here. Since we're going so radical, the 242 AMC uh, transfer case didn't come with the shifter. It should have come with the short shifter. The WJ has a long shifter, and there's this odd square tab around the bolt, so. <sighs> So if it's got the same cool little tab, then it'll work. I'll just transfer the entire shifter over to the new transfer case, and it should work. And in that way, I won't have to move this down. So this is a lock right here. You just pry this off, and then once this is disconnected, right, you can uh, just slip this out, slip it through this hole, put the, bra the lock bracket back on and then it's designed for this cable to come through to the short connector here but uh, the transfer case I got didn't even come with the shifting lever so I gotta see uh, how it'll work that's the lady right there who sent me this thing so I'm trying to peep it right now oh yeah it looks like it might have the groove that that thing goes into so let me check it. I'll pry this out here without getting oil in my eye. Yep. Looks like it'll work, man. The lever here hopefully will go on to the transfer case outside with this groove. You see the groove right there? It'll go around the groove on the outside and yep, it'll work. Okay, so one of the advantages that I kind of have is that I have the uh, lift kit on here so I've got these one inch spacers which already if you look above the transfer case a lot of people complain that it's real tight up there but the transmission and transfer case have been dropped an inch because of these spacers so I kinda have a benefit of access to the top where I can get my hand and tools up in there now because of that the uh, transmission mount here and the uh, transmission support bar, even though it's dropped, is kind of still in the way. But what I'm going to do is, I've already removed the shift lever. So i got to remove the shift lever bracket in order to access bolts. There are six of them in total. Um, 
and the transmission mount seems to be in the way but this bracket is really in the way so let me get hot on that I said because the lever is going to be long, I can leave this bracket right here in place instead of lowering it to the other hole down here. All right, y'all, a little update. So I moved the cross member, the one inch uh, blocks, the lowering kit. Six bolts to actually remove the transfer case. One of them is under here, so I'm gonna have to remove this. That's where we're at. So this was the mount for the transmission. I supported the transmission and actually had to elevate it just a couple uh, millimeters to get the long bolt out of here. But now I have to break these four bolts down to remove this in order to get that one bolt in there because it requires a long socket and uh, it just won't fit in this little space here, at least the length that I have, so this has got to come off now, and that's where I'm at. And hopefully it won't be that big of a pain. <sighs> I wish I had a proper breaker bar, but I got all I have is this impromptu cheater pipe here. I mean, this is like a half-inch breaker bar, but it's pretty much combat ineffective here with the little plastic and leverage on there. Oh, there we go. And yep. All right up in the lens. How's about that for 3D, huh? Uh huh? We're all about the entertainment here. So now that I got that done, using a impact drill for the first time as a DeWalt, and let me tell you, makes things fast, I'm just saying, highly recommend it. Uh, Alright. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And I can lower, I can lower the transmission just a couple, couple inches if I need to to get further up on the top. There's a lot of clearance already, but you've seen the pain. This side here on the passenger side apparently is a pain to break. So if I can lower it a little bit, I might have a little bit more access. But you're going to be doing one, one and two clicks at a time for some of these. So bear with me. I'll get back with you as soon as I, I'm fixing to pull this off. Okay, sunlight's all gone now, so I really hope you can see this. I'm not checking the exposure or the focus or anything. But sometimes, the way this thing is angled, you gotta do it with a wrench. So it's 14 millimeter, and it's hard to get uh, a DIY cheater pipe on there, just because it's the box end, it's too big. So you can use little combo here of two wrenches to make a kind of a cheater pipe. Just be careful. I like to I'll put my hand over the joint here in case it slips. It won't mess me up too bad. Uh, but you can use that to break these damn bolts. But yeah, 14 millimeter. Two on the bottom. This is three over here. I'm finding once they're once they're broke they're they're loose, they're only hand tight, so here's another one right here. Hopefully I can do this with the uh, lack of space here, leverage-wise. How do I configure this sucker? Shoot. Uh, oh, inside. There we go, like that. 
do my hands. Break it. I mean, that's easy. That's that's already four of the six, man. Right there. Oh, I'm gonna get this air hose. So here's got a squeeze clamp, so I need pliers to pull this uh, air line out. Let me do that, I'll get right back to you. Okay, the sixth one is a pain, uh, but it's doable. Definitely need a 12 point. I wound up using uh, wrenches. 14 millimeter wrench is what I used. So now, this thing is supposed to be pretty heavy, uh, but of course half of it's missing, so that's half the weight. So hopefully it won't be that heavy, but uh, let me see if I can wiggle this and try and avoid cutting the shit out of myself right now. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so you gotta be prepared to bench the weight, people. Right, here it comes. Instead, oh God. instead of my face, that is easy peasy. <sighs> okay, real quick, by way of comparison, okay, the uh, shop that I have gotten the uh, that I got the two four two AMG uh, transfer case from, they went and took the uh, front thing off a of two forty seven. Right, because the splines are different. Right, 27 spline, 32 spline. So they went and swapped it out for me, this whole piece right here. So this is off of a 247. If you plan on doing this, you gotta have whatever it's gonna take to mate with uh, transmission. So you need this to fit. Uh, so for the 4.7 Laredo 1999 I got a 45 RFE transmission which is a 23 spline mating thing to the trans or the transfer case so like I said they swapped it out for a 247 uh, input shaft okay so what I'm gonna do with this is wait till I get it mounted in the truck that way the whole body won't spin then I'll remove the flange okay ladies and germs this is right after I got a lock on here. Okay, so this has been half an hour, 45 minutes of trying to rotate the gears in the middle, the input, the intake shaft to get that lined up with the transmission and then all six of the bolts lined up at the same time. I was raising and lowering the transmission with my motorcycle jack here, the red one and the bottle jack, using my Chrysler wrench to just slowly adjust the angle. And then I had the transfer case in neutral, which was a mistake. So make sure that it's in gear so that you can rotate the spindle here and thereby rotate the input shaft right so that you can get the teeth lined up and just now right I just turned the camera back on because I didn't want to repeat <laughs> all this BS man but uh it just finally went up in there so right now I'm good I am gonna throw a nut on for safety here To be, to be perfectly honest, I thought that the guys set me up for failure and gave me the wrong uh, spline on the intake shaft, but uh, no, it's good, and it went all the way in. No issues under the, other than that. I mean, if you were on a jack or on, on a lift and you had buddies, you know, you can, you know, hoist it up in there, twist it until the teeth line up and the six bolts line up, and then junk. Probably like in five minutes, but me. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So let me get rid of this motorcycle jack here, and then I'll get back to bolt tightening. 
Alright everybody, sorry for the harsh light here, but now that we got the whole thing in place and we can lock this down, see about removing this flange bolt. Just not enough room. So, let's lift the tranny a little bit higher. Jack it up. Alright, to lay out the obstacles ahead, you see there the rear flange for the double car to drive shaft leading up to the back of the transfer case right here. All right, the challenge is going to be once I get that up to proper height is if the axle is actually going to fit once I swap out the head on the axle.